In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on his face. Through the joyful sound of our We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, there is no Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to all of you as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent, and tonight we are doing the third scrutiny for Andrew and uh, Devon, who's, uh, who are going to receive the sacrament of baptism at Easter Vigil. And we also have Kimberly, a candidate uh, for full communion into the church. Let us pray for them that they may be strengthened by the Lord in their faith. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is with the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord, Lord, there is is mercy mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the the Lord, Lord, there there is is mercy and and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark inequities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With With the the Lord Lord, there is mercy mercy and and fullness fullness of of redemption. redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With With the the Lord Lord, there there is mercy and and fullness fullness of of redemption. redemption. For with the Lord there is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, for he will redeem Israel from all their inequities. With With the the Lord Lord there there is mercy mercy and fullness fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive with re- of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The sister of Lazarus sent word to Jesus saying, 
Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, The illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and, and seen that he, what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Just to situate uh, everyone, this is the third week of uh, our scrutiny for our elect, Andrew and Devon, who are being prepared for the sacrament of baptism this coming Easter vigil. And uh, by scrutiny, um, we do not mean we are scrutinizing their lives like investigating them as if they've done anything criminal or immoral. No, we are helping them with our prayers to be ready for the new life that they are about to embrace. A life with Christ and uh, to become new members of our Christian community. And we are anxiously, excitedly, you know, joining them in their journey into becoming Christians. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, we also have Kimberly. She's the mother of Devon, um, being prepared to receive uh, her confirmation to, to become fully in communion with the church. 
Now, two weeks ago, we heard Jesus offer himself to our elect as the living water. He said, whoever drinks this water will never thirst again. And what he was saying was that in this life, Jesus is all we need. If we have him in our lives, we will never desire nor crave for anything again. This world offers a lot of temporary and fleeting satisfaction and contentment. But, like I said, they're just fleeting. They, they, they come and go. But Jesus gives happiness that lasts forever. Then last week, Jesus offered to our elect this uh, truth that he is the light that takes away the darkness in our lives. Jesus healed the blind man and he wants to heal our own blindness to the important truth that he himself revealed to us. Now, many times we allow ourselves to be deceived and at times we choose to remain blind to realities that confront us in exchange for the world's conveniences, maybe pleasure, security, and comfort. Jesus wants to take us out of that darkness and into his wonderful light. Now today we heard that beautiful gospel story of the raising of Lazarus. It was so dramatic. In fact, when I saw one movie many, many years ago, the title was uh, The Ten Commandments. This scene on, on Ten Commandments was the second movie I saw. The title was Jesus of Nazareth. This scene was so hair-raising, hair but it was the most beautiful scene in that long movie. It ran for four hours especially when Jesus uh, said, Lazarus, come forth. It was so beautiful that the people in the movie house just started you know, applauding that scene. Lazarus coming out of the tomb, wrapped you know, in linen cloths, and he was back to life. Now, we, we can fully understand what the message of Jesus here, especially for, for our elect is. First, he was the living water, then he's the light, now he is the life. Jesus is the life. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, will live, and he who lives and believes in me will never die. Will never die. Now, you'll probably say, how can that be true? People believe in Jesus and yet they died. The saints believed in Jesus and they died, right? We have people we know as close to our hearts. My parents believed in Jesus. And they died. People still die, especially during our time. They prayed, believed, and yet died. But when Jesus spoke of life, he did not just mean this temporal life that we have. This life that knows and experiences sufferings. This life that we know of on earth will definitely end. But Jesus promises that those who died believing in him and those who live because of him will rise again. And that is the life he was talking about. He who lives and believes in me will never die because they will live forever. And that is the life that Jesus is offering to you, Andrew, Devin, Kimberly, and to all of us. We heard in the first reading in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, 
God promised that he will open your graves and I will make you rise from them. It's a new life, a different life that Jesus is offering. In the words of St. Paul, in the second reading, he said, you will be born in the spirit, in the spirit, into a new life. You know, if we do believe in that, because Jesus asked Martha, do you believe in this? And we're being asked, do you believe in it? Do you believe in, in the promises that God made to us? Do we believe in the resurrection, not only in the resurrection of Jesus, but also in our own resurrection through him? Do we believe in that? If we do, then we will find the answers to our questions about, you know, uh, suffering, about evil in this world. Martha asked Jesus, Lord, if only you'd been here, my brother would not have died. It was like asking or telling Jesus, you you should have been here. Where were you, Lord, when I needed you the most? And and many times we ask the same question. Where is God in the face of all these evil, all all these sufferings? Where is God during this pandemic? And, And for many people, that question could lead to doubt. Like, God is not helping us, so maybe God does not exist. And it is an understandable reaction except that it is too simplistic. It assumes that we have a God who is just like us, and therefore, he should respond just as we think. If if he is a true God. But no, God is not like us. His ways are not our ways. We've heard that many times. As Jesus revealed in the gospel today, God is not so much a rescuing God, but a redeeming God. And God does not always protect us from pain, but instead answers it. If we just contemplate on that, he himself entered human pain and suffering. He even went through the process of death. Why did it happen and why do these things happen? Jesus said in the gospel, it had to happen so that the glory of God may be revealed. Then after saying that, he raised Lazarus back to life. But you need to remember Even as Jesus raised Jesus back to life, eventually Lazarus died again. He did. Life on earth is precious, yes. It is a gift that we need to cherish. We need to be grateful for and to nourish. But we need to understand that this life is only a stepping stone to that one true life, a higher level of life which is our life with God. And that is what our baptism reminds us. That through baptism, a new kind of life is introduced to us. We no longer live for this world. We live for the kingdom of God. Andrew and Devin, in two weeks, you will receive the sacrament of baptism. At that moment, you will be claimed or reclaimed, I should say, by Christ. The sign of the cross on your your crown at baptism would mean you belong to Christ. You will be marked with the brand of Christ. Remember I said last week, you will receive a new identity. A new identity. Not a new social security number, but a new identity in Jesus. Don't be scared if I say this to you. 
your life will not belong to you anymore. It will belong to Christ. And we, Christians, should be reminded of that. When we were baptized, we belonged to Christ. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. And therefore, everything about us belongs to Christ. And so, you know, when people say, I own my own, own life, I'm in charge of myself, I think they don't understand what they are saying. Being Christian means Christ has chosen us and we entered into a covenant with him. And that covenant is a bond of love that nothing can destroy. Again, we belong to Christ and Christ will always love us and he'll always be with us. That is what true life is all about. So today I invite Andrew and Devin and their sponsors, please come forward. Andrew, Devin, please bow your heads and pray. Everyone, please rise. Let us pray for these elect whom God has chosen. May the grace of the sacraments conform them to Christ in his passion and resurrection and enable them to triumph over the bitter fate of death. That these elect may be given the faith to acknowledge Christ as the resurrection and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they be freed from sin and grow in the holiness that leads to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That liberated by repentance from the shackles of sin, they be become like Christ by baptism, dead to sin and alive forever in God's sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be filled with the hope of the living, giving, life-giving spirit and prepare themselves thoroughly for their birth to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That that the Eucharistic food which they are soon to receive may make them one with Christ, the source of life and of resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Paul Sant and all our faithfully departed enjoy the vision of God with those in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may walk in newness of life and show the world the power of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for the names entered in our book of intentions, and for the parishioners of resurrection, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying for those who need our prayer, especially those who are praying for for healing and recovery. Uh, The family of Melanie Katanghal, and also Jeanette Mendoza, that they may be helped by the Lord and recover from their sickness. And for one who is celebrating her birthday today, uh, Catalina Dizon, for God's blessings upon her as well. And for, for those who are dear to us, who have asked for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Father, source of life, in giving life to the living, you seek out the image of your glory, and in raising the dead, you reveal your unbounded power. Rescue these elect from the tyranny of death, for they long for new life through baptism. Free them from the slavery of Satan, the source of sin and death, who seeks to corrupt the world you created and saw to be good. Place them under the reign of your beloved Son, that they may share in the power of his resurrection and give you witness to your glory before all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you commanded Lazarus to step forth alive from his tomb and by your own resurrection freed all people from death. We pray for these, your servants, Andrew and Devin, who eagerly approach the waters of new birth and hunger for the banquet of life. Do not let the power of death hold them back, for by their faith they will share in the triumph of your resurrection, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Andrew and Devin, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And it was again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
dear sisters and brothers that may sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for, the, for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by his sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise, as we acclaim Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbath, plenis uccelia terra, gloria tua, O sana in excelsis, benedictus in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Edward, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
trusting in the words of Jesus. So let's call God our Father as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This coming Thursday evening, the Annunciation Feast, March 25th, we will have our Lenten Rosary in church at 7 p.m. So you're all invited to come in person and join the Rosary. It'll also be live streamed on our website. Stations of the Cross are being said uh, all Fridays of Lent. And uh, this coming Friday, at, uh, after the 8 a.m. daily uh, morning Mass, Stations are also being done at 7 p.m. on Fridays and also live streamed. Now, the Knights of Columbus are serving up their delicious Lenten fish fry 
for one last time for Lent. Here is uh, one of our chefs, and he makes sure that it's really enjoyable and delicious. So this coming Friday, March 26th, starting at 5.30, uh, you can reserve your dinner on our website, and uh, as usual, as always, it is free. So please come with your donations that they appreciate. Starting this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, reservations will be needed for all Masses and liturgies during the Holy Week up to Easter Sunday. So we ask you to please go online to our website and find that link there. It's easy to find. You can make reservations starting Palm Sunday and all other activities until um, Easter Sunday. And again, I've been announcing this retreat uh, to be given by the Franciscans. It'll be live streamed, and so we, our plan is to, um, to show the live stream of that retreat on Holy Tuesday and Holy Wednesday from 6 p.m. You know, if you would like to, uh, to have something to listen to and uh, join in the meditation given by the Franciscans, please come to church, 6 p.m., Holy Tuesday and Holy Wednesday. That's within Holy Week. Please take a copy of the bulletin. It has all the information you need for Holy Week and Easter liturgies. And also always check our website for more information and updates. Good to see you all tonight. And uh, we continue praying and continue taking uh, care of one another and of ourselves as well and stay, stay healthy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, these your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, a Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And have a blessed evening.